Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you on the Object 780. This is a tier 10 Soviet heavy tank that just went into the game today with practically no warning whatsoever. Now, this is a very interesting release for Wargaming because you're able to purchase this by mixing credits, bonds, free experience, gold, and even blueprints. And the first 15,000 people who managed to log into the server this morning at 6 a.m. UK time to be able to purchase the tank will have a unique style that will have the number in order that they purchased it forever. So everyone has a unique number going from 1 all the way up to 15,000. I was 463rd, even though I had managed to click about what felt like a hundred times in the first three minutes and got my hands on it. And all of the styles, the unique styles were sold out within the first 20 minutes from 6 a.m. UK time on the European server. Anyway, this video isn't just about uh, whether the object to uh, the 780 is worth it. It's going to be a, a full review of the vehicle so you can know how to counter this thing on the battlefield as well. And if it's available in the future, as I expect, it's going to be sold out fairly quickly even possibly by the end of the time that this video is rendered and uploaded whether it's going to be worth picking up in the future so the object 780 is pretty much a run-of-the-mill standard fast soviet heavy tank there are quite a few vehicles in the game that are already like this although they do behave differently for example the wz 1115a or the object 277 it's very easy when wargaming are presenting this thing as effectively the first kind of nft in the game with the style and that kind of ridiculous fear of missing out pressure to get carried away from the fact that it is just kind of like those other two tanks it has a 130 millimeter caliber gun, the same as the other two vehicles in this comparison. It does have higher alpha damage though, 530, which is very nice for making trades. The thing that I hate about this vehicle, however, is that the DPM is substantially lower than the WZ 1115A and even worse than a 277, which doesn't really feel like it has the best DPM to begin with in World of Tanks in 2022. In fact, when we go on to Tanks GG and we order all of the tier 10 heavy tanks by damage per minute we can clearly see that we have to go a, a very long way down the list even below tanks like the e100 using the 128 millimeter caliber gun now we're dropping below the vz55 which has the opportunity of using an auto loader dropping below a 50b which has an auto loader dropping below obviously the chieftain which doesn't have quite the alpha damage it's got 90 less alpha damage but what i'm trying to suggest here below way below the 260 now below the 277 below the 60 TP, which has 750 alpha damage, below the IS-4, which no one really thinks of as being like a big damage dealing tank to begin with. And there we go. The 780 pretty much on par with the ST-2. The problem is, is the ST-2 has an auto reloader and can fire both shells at the same time for 880. And the, the tanks that are basically just below the 780 with regards to their damage per minute are the E-100 and the VK-1. 7201k which both have 750 alpha damage the 705a which does have worse damage per minute than the object 780 has 650 alpha damage which definitely beats 530 and wow do we really I, I guess when you think about it the is7 does have bad dpm but come on that's a classic tank and that vehicle has way better turret armor and upper hull armor spoilers as we're going to be finding out later one thing that is nice about the 780, however, is its standard ammunition penetration, 267, which isn't really that useful considering that the only players who are likely to ever get their hands on this tank are going to be whales inside the game. And what do the whales do? Well, they're going to load gold. And for the whales, this tank has a disappointing 311 millimeters of APCR penetration, which massively lags behind the high explosive anti-tank rounds on the 5A of 340 and also on the 277 which are also 340. This vehicle felt very painful for me to play because even though your standard penetration is distant, uh, decent, sorry, the difference between that and your prune rounds is actually not all that much. And when you're also factoring in the normalization that the tank has, or should I say the loss of it when you go from your armor piercing rounds to your APCR rounds, this thing just didn't really felt like it had the penetration to deal with some of the thickly armored plates or even to be able to counter itself. Self, more on that in a second. Its shell velocity is really nice though, 1,130, and the APCR rounds on this tank do get 1,480 meters a second shell velocity, so it can snipe at rapidly moving targets. 
You don't really have to worry about how much ammunition this vehicle carries as well. More than enough to take a good old chunk of AP, APCR and high explosive rounds. So now onto the gun handling. And this is really where the, the, this tank has its highlight. 1.9 seconds aim time is amazing. 0.35 accuracy means that this tank can snipe. And its dispersion values are decent on its turret. Not the best when moving, but you could try and fix that a little bit with smooth ride. Or by taking vertical stabilizers on the tank. Another thing that is nice about this tank is 7 degrees of all-round gun depression. A lot like the WZ-111-5A trumps other Soviet vehicles apart from the ST-2. So now onto the mobility of the 780. And it's a little bit confusing here. It looks like the tank has got a really good power to weight ratio of 17.47 generated from a great engine power of 870. And this should make it look like it's way faster than the WZ-111-5A, right? Because it's got a better power to weight ratio. But for some reason, uh, and also it should look like it's faster than the 277 within that regard as well, or on par. But it's actually really not. I was very surprised when I played this tank that it actually felt quite sluggish on quite a few terrains, especially when it's on medium or when it's on soft. And that is because Wargaming have given it quite poor ground resistances. Whereas when we look at the 277, its actual ground resistances are significantly better. And even the 5A is way better on hard and medium. And it's only on soft where the 5A will truly struggle. And in fact, the 5A also has a better engine power than Wargaming stayed inside the garage because Wargaming. Accordingly, this means that the Object 780 can only get up to 37.5 kilometers an hour along medium terrain, way, way, way less than the WZ-111 5A. And the 277 is plowing along at 55 kilometers an hour. I wouldn't say that the 45 kilometers an hour top speed limit of the 780 really feels that fast uh, for 2022 either. And while you can put a turbo on this tank, uh, you, you could put a turbo on the 5A or the 277. Although you could argue that because those two tanks have worse gun handling, that you might want to instead boost the gun handling capacity of those tanks and that allows the 780 to kind of have the same kind of gun handling, but just the same top speed when you whack a turbo on this vehicle. So now onto the armor of the 780, and this is where things just get really weird for this tank. Look at this thing's armor layout. It definitely has a lower plate, clearly does, but the tank's lower plate is raised way up on the tracks. It's a very, very, very compact tank, almost as if it's a bit of a, a pancake. Now, I should let you know that this is the armor protection against 267 millimeters from the front. It's got about 260 millimeters of effective frontal armor on the lower plate. That's outrageously good. And its upper plate is an auto ricochet because of the awesome angling. Now, if you do get above this thing, it does become quite weak. Or spoilers, if you play a vehicle that has high explosive anti-tank rounds and you fire at its upper hull, yeah, it's not very good unless it's using all of its gun depression. It just feels as if this tank is almost designed to do well against tier 8s and tier 9s. I think this thing will be an absolute predator against 8s and 9s, but it really does start to fail as soon as you're playing against tier 9 or tier 10 premium rounds. Nevertheless, this is still great armor for the tank, but it does have quite a few little things that I annoy that annoy me. Firstly, the weak point on top. A lot of heavy tanks, especially tanks like the IS-7, Chieftain, yada, yada, yada. They just don't have those weak points. And unless you're using all of this tank's 7 degrees of gun depression, it, you are you, you manage to get taken in the top of your weak point very easily on this vehicle. I received so many shots into the top uh, weak point on this tank. And if they load heat, the weak point becomes even bigger that you have to worry about. And even if you are using some of your gun depression, it really doesn't get all that much better. Next, one thing that annoyed me about the front of this vehicle is that to the left and to the right of the gun shield, premium rounds on tier 9 and tier 10 tanks can quite easily go through. Especially when you start to turn your turret, you'll notice that it just doesn't really have the thickest of armor at the front. Next, let's talk about side scraping in this vehicle. Very proficient at side scraping against standard ammunition. As we can see here, you can side scrape out around the corner and most of the enemy shells are going to bounce. But what happens when they load gold? Yes, uh, it does become significantly worse and really when you're engaging this tank you are going to have to spam gold and this tank isn't like an object 279e where it can wedge the front of its vehicle up because it has 30 millimeters of belly armor and this by far is the most frustrating thing about the tank also do you notice how the belly of the vehicle actually slants slightly upwards which means that when you're just dead on from an enemy tank 
there's quite a substantial area where if they aim at your lower plate and they miss, that they're just going to overmatch your 30 millimeters of belly armor if they've got a 91 millimeter caliber gun and larger. And who doesn't have a 91 millimeter caliber gun and larger when you're at tier 8, 9, and 10? This means that when the 780 goes over a ridgeline, you have the easiest shot ever, even with standard ammunition, against either the belly of the tank or this lower plate here. I thought that this vehicle honestly was going to have better protection when I played it. And I, I found that while sometimes it just ends up like this apocalypse tank that a lot of players can't deal with, it just has really annoying angled armor that just seems to catch shells. And apart from being front on and just trolling opponents that probably have less penetration than 250, really didn't feel very all that impressive for me. And considering that the vehicle, it's not exactly as if it's outrageously fast or doesn't have outrageously good damage per minute, it definitely felt a little lackluster within the armor department. Now, let me clarify that at the very last minute, Wargaming actually buffed up the hit points of this tank from 2050 up to 2200. But I believe that was the only little micro patch that they did. So, yes, it's got an extra 150 hit points. One thing that does rock about this tank, however, is that it has 410 meters view range, which means that you're easily going to be able to spot your opponents, even without premium consumables at decent distances, especially if you take the field mods. All right, so how exactly would I choose to set up an Object 780? Well, I personally am using Vent, a gun rammer, and I'm using a turbo on this tank. Although quite a few people will like to drop the turbo to use vertical stabilizers on the vehicle because they want to have the extra gun handling. And some players might want to drop the, the turbo to use a durability module to increase the hit points. Although it doesn't really have that many hit points. And I don't really feel like your threat to you in this tank is being tracked. Because one thing I should have highlighted with the armor comparison of this vehicle is that do you see how the tracks are uh, above the hull so if your opponents try to shoot you from the front here quite often they'll have to make a decision of either tracking your tank or damaging your tank unless they get a really annoying belly shot there after they've managed to go through the tracks so it is definitely one of the most advantageous things about the 780 is that it can kind of come around a corner like this Hope that people are silly and they shoot your tracks or shoot your, your lower plate uh, and then you'll be able to take advantage of them. But this is only going to work against the mediocre players and I'm, I'm really not sure if there are many mediocre players playing around today from the kind of games that I had. Anyway, those are the kind of equipment loadouts that I would like to use. Wargaming, by the way, suggested that you might want to end up taking the modified configuration on this tank. And the reason for that is that this vehicle... It does burn. I think I ended up setting quite a few tanks on fire. And there's a lot of these tanks in the matchmaker this morning. And I ended up losing my fuel tanks uh, a very large number of times. However, I didn't actually get set on fire that many times. Maybe it's because I do have preventative maintenance, I believe, on my driver that was helping me out. But definitely, 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 when you play this tank, you're going to have to get used to either taking a fire extinguisher using that or using your repair kit on your fuel tanks because if they go red you are going to very much regret it finally i want to make a, a quick run past with the field mods that i would recommend first one i would like to take would be improved ground resistances then i would personally recommend to take the accuracy on this vehicle to improve that because the aim time is fabulous next artillery doesn't really feel like it's a part of the game so i'd recommend the view range that will get this thing up to kind of like scout tank levels which will be absolutely outrageous. For the power supply rewiring, it depends. If you're using a turbo, I would honestly recommend to further increase the top speed by an additional four kilometers an hour. And that is because you might have the power to wait with a very good crew to actually utilize that extra four kilometers an hour. Otherwise, this tank will really struggle to be able to get up to its 49 kilometers an hour top speed limit with that field mod if you're not doing something to boost the engine power of the tank. And finally, I would recommend to, if you're dropping vertical stabilizers, to probably end up using the lightweight platform to improve the dispersion when you're moving and when you're turning the hull. Because remember, this the only bad dispersion value on this tank, it's not when you turn the turret, it's when you're moving the vehicle. And so I think it's worth sacrificing the 2% hit points to gain the 4% gun handling for me personally. But anyway, I think that's quite enough jibber-jabber. Let's see how the new 780 performs on the battlefield. 
All right, so we're rolling out on Roomberg, and this was actually one of the few games that I got where there were actually hardly any object 730s, both on my team and the enemy team. Let's take a look just quickly to see if the uh, my object 780s managed to, to purchase the tank within the first 15,000. Doesn't look like they did. I have to admit, in the battle, having that kind of unique glowing number as to when you purchased it, I kind of like it. I kind of like it, but I also don't like the way that Wargaming released the vehicle. The idea that I had to get up at 5.45 in the morning to go and apply a micro patch and then feverishly click uh, about a hundred times in a couple of minutes was rather irritating. All right, so I end up getting penned by the leopard there. And and honestly, with this vehicle, it's it's very hard to know where you end up getting penetrated. But I managed to out-trade them. I do 568 and I take 404. Obviously, they low-rolled, I high-rolled, but that is World of Tanks in general. And this thing does do very well in making trades against medium tanks. Ah, thanks, RT. I appreciate that one. I'm going to end up using my medkit here because I don't want to have the reduced crew skills that will prevent me from being able to make my way across what I think is this medium terrain. And I'd like to clarify, I'm using Vents, Gun Rammer, and a Turbo. And do you notice how I'm still going along at 38? It definitely doesn't feel like a fast, fast heavy to me. The ground resistances on this vehicle really do hold it back. And it does trundle around a lot more than I, I thought it would. I guess Wargaming decided that they didn't want to have like another super fast heavy tank going into the game that also had his armor as, as good as on this vehicle. But this is the highlight of the tank here. Look at that. Aim time, good. Accuracy, great. Alpha damage, lovely. Shame about the damage per minute. Other vehicles at tier 10 heavy here might be able to fire off more shells, might be able to do more damage if all of their shells go exactly where they aim them. But look at that consistency on this gun. It's actually rather good for sniping. And this vehicle, if it's able to hold a ridge line at a, at a mid distance or even a long distance, is going to be very, very efficient at being able to club through anyone who wants to make their way towards it. And oh, hello, artillery. Nice to see you. Remember me? You put a shot into me earlier? That one tried to miss, but it still hit. And that, yeah, 0.35 base accuracy before you even get all of the field mods on this tank just feels absolutely lovely. And this thing... It's a good sniper, and this is with the regular rounds on this tank. We managed to overmatch the side of the WZ-1321 there. Looks like we managed to track them. Hopefully my team will be able to finish them off before they get back into safety. Oh, it doesn't look like they're actually going to. The APCR rounds on this vehicle, pretty darn nice as well. Remember, 1,480 meters a second shell velocity does allow you to really snap your shots in. So I think I was actually spotted right now, even though my sixth sense hasn't gone off in a while, and I've got to make an awkward decision. Do I want to repair my tracks or my ammo rack? Because I'm not using a large repair kit. I'm a bit short on credits right now. Uh, Wargaming hasn't done a consumable sale for the last couple of months, and I don't really want to waste 20,000 credits a game just to be able to use a repair kit when I could use my small ones instead. Oh, of course, I'm going to be a little bit of a disadvantage for it. We've hit every single shot so far this game. And each of them has managed to penetrate. We're up to 3,600 damage. And hopefully this is showing you just how proficient this thing is at being a sniper. And in again, 484 damage. I don't think I'm going to get any more shots there, do I? So I decide to move on. And I believe that was my first gold round that I fired this game. Uh, and that was because I thought that I was going to have to shoot at the E100. But, uh, oh well. Duh. My round bounces off the front plate of the WZ-1321 there. That is the most heavily armored light tank in the game. All right, Cranvong, maybe I'm going to get him here. And we do. Just lovely. This is a sniping heavy tank. Absolutely wonderful within that regard. Kind of feels a bit more like a British tank with regards to its gun handling. I don't think many Soviet tanks could really be trying to uh, thread the needle there to uh, avoid the E100's side armor and to be able to just try and finish off this Cranvong, even though they're really dug in behind all of this rubble. And... I have to admit, when I was playing the, the Object 780, I did do my best when I was sniping at long ranges compared to a lot of the other heavy tanks inside the game. The problem is, is that the matchmaker this morning has definitely been something else. I, I will be fully transparent with you. I am cherry picking three of the more interesting games from the 20 or 30 rounds that I played in the first few hours of today. Unfortunately, Wargaming didn't think that it was a good idea to allow the content creators to super test this tank uh, just to be able to get an idea of it so we could actually make good reviews for all of you. And I'm pretty sure that uh, 
on YouTube where quite often it's about trying to rush to be able to get content out rather than try and really spend some time with the vehicle and focus on its quality so I can give you a real opinion. Uh, that's how it is. So you're just going to have to uh, accept that I don't have a final, final, final opinion on this vehicle today. And also the matchmaker this morning has been possibly the worst it's ever been in World of Tanks. Alright, so I've got a very awkward situation here. Do I want to go for the 780 or do I want to go for the FP4005? And unfortunately, I decided that maybe he was going to low roll. Maybe he'd be preoccupied. Maybe he'd miss when he's stunned. And I thought I had more chance to survive against this player than I did about the other one that was coming around the corner. In retrospect, I guess I could have sat there and maybe tried to angle my armor and hope that he bounces off my lower plate. But as you can see, most 780s are firing a lot of gold this morning because it's their, it's their new toy. They just went and they spent upwards of... $150 worth of currency to be able to get this tank. Why wouldn't they be wanting to play it to the fullest? Nevertheless, 5,700 damage dealt in five minutes, showing you how consistent this thing is at being a sniper. However, you can see that its armor, at least in the way that I used it, is not reliable. All right, so we're rolling out on mines in what was pretty much one of my only nice matchups today. And if you're wondering what is happening right now, uh, yes, oh dear. The only nice matchup that I had, and I had a pretty much 30 second lag spike at the start of the game, which stops me from being able to contest the hill. Now, this is going to result in a couple of bugs here. Do you notice how the T-49 still is on the map, even though it's actually not there? So don't get confused. I obviously just had a desync with my connection. Maybe uh, Wargaming servers were having a few issues as well with everybody trying to get their hands on this vehicle as quickly as they possibly could. And in this kind of a matchup, I just feel like I have to be aggressive. Get forwards and try to get some shots in. And there we go. First one into the lower plate. And in this kind of a position, this vehicle is very, very good indeed. Absolute pancake tank. The WZ111 5A bouncing a gold round. The IS-3A bouncing a couple of rounds there off my lower plate. We'll see if the IS-3A adjusts his tactics, and yes he does. It looks like the IS-3A actually manages to go through the top of my tank and my weak point there. But, um, you know, when you're getting clapped that hard, it's one thing doing 390 damage to a tier 10 tank by shooting their weak point, albeit valiantly, and taking, you know, 530 return fire. And in these kind of situations, the gun handling just feels really nice on this vehicle. It feels accurate, it feels like it snaps and it shots. And when you've got vehicles that you can actually penetrate in front of you in these situations, oh, feels good. All right, so the 5A actually cakes a, a heat round there against me. We're actually gonna take a look in the post-game stats to see where all of these rounds are going in. Because obviously a tank like this, it's all about the armor, right? So we bounce off the AMX-30, avoid a shell from the Scorpion above, and I want to get just a little bit further forward to see if I can go after this 5A because I don't think the AMX-30 is going to come back after me. I'm actually thinking about making my way up towards the hill here, and we're aiming for the 30, and whoa, look at that, the Leopard actually appears out of the bush, sneaky Leopard, and puts a round into my side. And slowly but surely, even the buffed 2,200 hit points this vehicle has just doesn't really seem as if it's uh, it's going to maybe last the entire battle. Now, I missed the shell on the Amex 30 there. In retrospect, it looks like it was a terrible shot. I'd like to believe it was, uh, I have the excuse of my ping being red, and maybe a bit of packet loss. But there we go, the Leopard seemingly to hit the top of my tank again where the IS-3A got me. And my hit points aren't going the distance. I'm hoping to see if I can be able to get some more shots against this Leopard. Try and slam a shell in there. Miss the shot. 3,000 damage dealt so far, but luckily that Leopard gets annihilated from the T-49 on the top of the hill. Very good stuff. All right, so right now, the only thing that's going to stop me from being able to get up on the hill is either a wayward shot from the Leopard prototype or alternatively, if the AMX-30 manages to get me. So you'll see that I'm going to try and side scrape up, or should I say reverse up this slope, because I think that the 30 is going to be aiming at me, which is why I'm aiming on the corners. So 30 manages to penetrate me. Okay, well, there's no way he's going to penetrate me again, right? Surely not. He can't get me from here. He can't get me from here, right? It's a tier 8. And I literally look back and I just go, what? So let's take a look using battle hits, exactly where all of those shells went in. One of the reasons why I wanted to show you that last game is because if you think this tank is going to be like an Object 279E where you can just sit in front of your opponents and be pretty much impervious, that is not the case. Let's take a look at how the enemy shells 
entered my vehicle. Well, firstly, weak point on top. Unless you're using your full 7 degrees of gun depression, the top weak point on this tank will be accessible. Next, its armor on the front of the turret isn't that thick. And so if people fire real high penetration gold rounds, like the WZ-111 5A here, they will be able to sometimes go through your turret as well. The Leopard just managed to get the side shot in. That was with me trying, not expecting him to be in the bush. Then he followed it up with a good shot towards the top of my tank and kept trying to do that, but obviously missed it. But then these are the real weird ones. Well, not weird because I can perfectly explain it with the mechanics, or should I say the more annoying ones. When I was side scraping up to try and claim the hill to get the high ground and be able to shoot down on my opponents, the AMX-30 managed to actually overmatch the belly of my vehicle. Because while a tank like the 279E has, I don't know, 50, 60 millimeters of armor, this vehicle only has 30. And so the 105 millimeter caliber gun on the AMX-30 or the 100 millimeter caliber gun caliber gun, I'm not sure which exactly it is, but it's irrelevant because you've only got 30 millimeters of belly armor on this tank, so 91 millimeter caliber guns and larger will be able to go through it. And he didn't just do it once, did it twice. And that is a very thin pen, ladies and gents. Um, but this is going to happen. Annoying shells like this where they hit the tiniest of shots, literally hit the belly from there. These kind of shells will happen and they'll be so annoying for you to try and account for. And that's because you can't really account for them. They're just going to happen. And so don't think that this thing, if you choose to buy it or if you've bought it or you're fighting it, is kind of going to be the apocalypse tank. If it does expose that belly, all 91mm caliber guns will be able to take advantage of it. You have that weak point on top. And then from an angle like this, it's kind of just firing gold rounds at the upper hull or maybe gold rounds at the side here. If it angles like this, then you definitely want to get the side. And if it's not angling at all, well, it's pretty much gold from tier 9 and tier 10 tanks against the lower plate and hoping for luck if of course you can't see the weak point on top. So now we're going to join the game on highway and I'm making my way up towards the town because I love to contest the corner of this map. I've whacked a turbo on this vehicle and I feel like with its power to weight ratio I should be able to get into position. I'd like to clarify once again that the ground resistances of this vehicle end up with it feeling a lot slower than otherwise it should do. Eh, the 780 manages to get a gold round in through the side of my tank there. One of the things I would like to pause to mention is that remember that the vehicle's hull is kind of uh, shaped a bit like that, where it's shorter at the front and larger at the back. What that means is that if you're aiming at the side of one of these things, you should probably try to aim at the rear half, because otherwise you might end up only hitting the tracks. And obviously with the hull and the shape and the way that it ends down here, with such a bizarre suspension system, definitely trying to aim at the rear of the vehicle if you're trying to shoot it in the side, because of the way that the hull slants up along here. You'll have a larger target to be able to shoot is what I'm trying to suggest. All right, so let's get to side scraping here. Let's see if we can manage to go after evidently the vehicles that be coming along. All right, so I get tracked as well as also damaged. I don't even know how that happens. How do I get tracked and damaged here when the, the hull armor of the track, the, the, the hull isn't even behind the track there. And I just got penned three times in a row. I was absolutely baffled. Am I side scraping incorrectly in this vehicle? Obviously one managed to go in through the side. And then I get hit by the 430U again. And while we've managed to put three shells in to the object 780 there, I've lost all of my hit points right at the beginning of this game. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to stay put, look for shots against the E100 Jagdpanzer, catch a Fosh 155 that comes around the corner. Maybe I can get another shot in as they come around. And evidently, the enemy team, knowing that I'm wounded, wants to come and have a go at me. So here we go, object 430U. Gonna reverse again, get a shot into the lower plate of the 780. Now the 430U wants to come and deliver the final shot. And as long as I keep my frontal armor towards him, a ricochet the first shot, if he fired heat, he could probably fire in through my upper plate right now, but he's not firing heat, and not everybody fires heat. I'm gonna repair my track, keep it going, wiggle, make my armor really awkward. And it doesn't look like this 430U realizes that he can't just aim down at my lower plate. So we're going to put another shot into his, finish him off, and oh, yeah, I'm feeling good. Now, we bounce a shell on the 780, and it feels like when this tank gets down to 10% hit points and blow, it actually starts to work. Now, right now, I'm aiming for his lower plate, see that it's yellow, adjust my fire, and no excuses. That was a poor play. And then I even 
doubled down on my stupidity and I wedge the back of my tank around the corner and it looks like this guy catches a pixel at the back of my tank. Let's relive this shot. I'll put it in slow motion so that we can have an idea. So right now the shot is on the lower plate. Right now the shot is on the lower plate. I adjust and you'll see that I fire. Now, what I effectively just did is I fired through the tracks and I didn't actually hit the hull armor because remember the hull goes along there. What I should have done is I should have shot him along the plate along here. If I'd done that, I would have been able to take him out. Or maybe I could have even just shot the lower plate at that kind of an angle. But the player was using his armor intelligently and hopefully that shows you how you need to use your 780 armor in these kind of situations. It's all about not exposing your lower plate too much unless your opponents have got very poor penetration, wiggling, make it awkward, and try and put the pressure on your opponent to adjust their fire. But let's take a look once again in battle hits to see where all of those shells went. So let's see how we got penned. First one, pretty obvious, we got hit in the side. Second one, I'm side scraping at what I felt was the correct angle to be able to hide my lower plate and get my gun on my opponents. And I really thought from this angle that we weren't going to get caught by a regular shell from the the 279e unfortunately for me i guess the shell has just gone and hit through the side from from that kind of an angle if we try to replicate it on tanks gg here um i can only see ricochets from that kind of an angle unless i was angling more like this uh, unless, I guess, maybe the shell went and hit the belly of the tank. Again, via an overmatch because of the fact that the front tilts upwards ever so slightly, which just makes it so darn annoying if I keep getting overmatched in this position. All right, let's take a look at the next shell that hits us from the Object 780. Okay, well, for an armor-piercing shell, I would have expected that would have ricocheted as well, but maybe the guy just hit the 0.1% chance. I mean, I'm definitely not angling as much as that. Let's take a look at the next shell from the 430U. Okay, another magical, mystical shell that seems to have gone down into the side. Let's see exactly where this one went. Well, it looks like it has thread the needle and done the impossible once again and overmatched the underflap of this tank. And to show you on tanks, GG, I guess they hit this pixel down the side where, of course, the shell is going to overmatch. It is so irritating for me that the hull armor of the Object 780 does have this slight tilt upwards, and it means that you get overmatched so many times. Now, look, it's not the perfect side scraper because of it but it still has good enough armor holistically all round. And when you have people who are just shooting down at your lower plate, thinking that this is the weak point and the 430U clearly panics there, should be okay. Unfortunately, I did fluff up one shell against the enemy 780, which meant that my team went on to lose this game. I think if I had finished him off, I would have probably been able to snowball it back in my team's favor. And that was, I kind of got baited into thinking, surely it's right to shoot at the track of an angled tank like this. No, it wasn't. I should have shot right on the beak here, that would have been the shot that would have taken him out. Or even with gold on this tank, I probably could have gone through the lower plate sometimes. But definitely, I should have aimed slightly higher, shouldn't have gone for the track. And so I end up hitting this angled side armor here, rather than, I guess, getting lucky and going for the belly. So now I want to join a game on Sand River, where we initially went down to where the big glut of Object 780s were. And yeah, look how many there are inside this matchup. We got a shot into a leopard, and now we've made our way up and around because I want to try and develop a little bit of a crossfire with my team. This Object 780s made his way across. We actually managed to get a shell right through what felt like the side of his turret or through his hull armor there. In this kind of a situation, ooh, with that STB-1 finishing off the 780, I decided to try and get forwards to try and take the fight against my opponents. Now, this position I'm getting into, it's very, very vulnerable from the side. And also, there's a 907 up here. And this 907, well, let's just say he's not going to back down. He's going to put round after round after round into our vehicle. And this is where my tragic damage per minute in this vehicle just feels rather lackluster. And I, I just don't seem to understand where this guy so reliably is going in. I guess he's overshooting my side armor here. Luckily, we managed to finish him off. But I'm down to 335, and I can't even see any of the holes on my vehicle. Still trying to figure out where this enigma of, an, of a tank will work. All right, so the TVP now comes around the corner. And what I want to show you here is what is the difference between a player who knows how to shoot this tank and a player who doesn't? Uh, well, as you can clearly see... Uh, the players who don't know how to shoot this tank, even with high explosive anti-tank rounds, are going to whiff a lot of their shells. As the TVP came around the corner, probably expecting, ha ha ha, I get to kill a brand new vehicle. Uh, nope, mate, you don't. We managed to uh, absorb the first shell and then 
take three subsequent shells afterwards. So it really shows you about this vehicle that it's going to be hopefully looking at the tank model on tanks gg using all of the information that i've provided to you that if it's angling like this then you want to go for the lower plate if you can slightly get above it go for the upper plate if you have it like this then you're probably going to have to shoot in here if you get any opportunity to be able to overmatch the belly with a 91 millimeter caliber gun do so and if it's not using any of its gun depression hit the weak point on top Obviously, when Wargaming released these vehicles, which are intended for the whales, right? The whales who are willing to get up like me at 5.45 in the morning and dance to the beat of Wargaming's drum to be able to click 100 times in a couple of minutes to be able to be the 463rd person to purchase this tank. Oh, yeah. Um, was it worth it? Honestly, no. This vehicle is disappointing for me. Um, I don't like how its DPM is bad. I really don't like its firepower with regards to being aggressive. I think this is the kind of tank for a player who wants to sit on a ridgeline with seven degrees of gun depression and duke it out with their opponents. I personally, honestly, would rather play something like an Object 140, just work a ridgeline, and at least I have some DPM to, to favor my aggression and be able to make some plays. The armor on this tank is undoubtedly troll, and I think this vehicle is going to end up being quite a strong tank, when the matchmaker gets back to normal and it ends up playing against tier 8 and tier 9 opponents, as well as also, should we say, the regular kind of tier 10s and not the kind of tier 10s that we had around this morning, which felt like it was Clan Wars tanks uh, basically just trying to get kills on Object 780s. This vehicle is disappointing for me. It, it's not a bad tank. It's far from a bad tank. Is it my play style? I don't think so. I don't think this tank is my playstyle. I would honestly rather play something like a Kranvang. I would honestly rather even play an ST2. I feel like I can make more trades more efficiently with an ST2 with a double barrel gun. Either I can deliver an 880 damage shell, I've got one extra degree of gun depression, and while there's no doubt that this thing is faster and um, it has uh, a, a better armor layout, I'd say, at least with the ST2, I know what I'm getting, and I've got some other kind of firepower capability that isn't just sit on a ridge line and just snipe at things that hopefully you can manage to penetrate. Without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest disappointment about this tank as well is the, the gold rounds. The gold rounds, they've got great APCR, so you're able to work your shell velocity. Uh, but quite often in World of Tanks, whether you like it or not, it comes down to trying to penetrate thick armor on a vehicle. And even when you're engaging 780s, you want to have your 340 pen to be able to go through here or go through here on the turret. And it just didn't have access to that. Or to have access to high explosive anti-tank rounds where you'll be able to do better at the close quarters combat distances. I feel like considering this tank is so accurate and that its regular rounds are so proficient, the APCR rounds, while they're good at decent distances with that shell velocity, kind of feel as if they're an unnecessary advantage. It's something that the tank is already good at. And I really feel that for me personally, I would have liked to have seen the vehicle have some DPM, some kind of interesting shooting mechanic like the SD2 has with its double barrel or better gold to be able to guarantee the win in close quarters combat. And in the end, this vehicle just feels as if it's a bit frustrating for me, especially with the, the lower plate overmatch. If this thing had 50 millimeters of lower plate armor, I would feel so much more comfortable. But in the even in the handful of games I showed you today, do you see how much this armor just ends up trolling you? And it did troll me as well in my play session. I could never really depend on the tank. I felt as if it was frustrating and felt as if the vehicle just sometimes worked, sometimes didn't. Definitely not my favorite tier 10. Is it as good as the 279E? Not even close. This thing is not even comparable to a 279E. I'd say it's more comparable to a WZ 1115A. And where both of those tanks do well, they'll do well in the same situations, is what I'm trying to suggest. So if you already do well in your 5A, then maybe you're going to do well in your Object 780. Is this thing worth dumping $150 or $200 worth of currency to be able to get? I don't think so. I think players who already have the Object 279E, you'd be silly to not just want to play that, because you it's not like you have bad matchmaking where you only get matched up against other 279Es. And this vehicle will be meeting the Chieftains. It will be meeting the 279Es. And while I'm not suggesting that it's not competitive, it doesn't feel like one of those Omega OP reward vehicles as you would expect with the fanfare that the vehicle 
was released. And I want to give a final talk about the fanfare with the vehicle being released. Is there anything wrong with the real early dedicated customers getting special, uh, a special style? No, not really. But Wargaming, I want to call you out for a couple of reasons. Number one, I really don't think that this tank, sh I, I really don't like vehicles like this being sold so early in the morning. Why? Why would you sell it at, at 7 a.m. European time? Uh, it makes absolutely no sense to me. What happens for people who maybe are either already on their way to work or people who who have jobs which finish at, in the later on in the evening and they don't want to get up? At, for me, it was 5.45 in the morning on a day which I, I would usually have off to be able to just purchase this tank. That one day a week where you get to have a lion taken away. Secondly, I don't like the way that Wargaming have handled the super testing of this tank. Sure, there's the new super test program on the EU server, and we must give Wargaming some slack considering the ongoing world events and them having to, to move out of Russia. Uh, uh, and so I'm sure that's impacted the, the testing of this vehicle. But the fact that the community contributors weren't included in uh, having access to the tank before under an NDA system it just seems stupid to me that the statistics were fully available um, and it seems stupid to me that you had super testers playing the tank and everyone could see that they were bombing it around in the battles and why were the community contributors not able to get their hands on this tank early so that they could be able to get better reviews so that people who were getting up at 5.45 in the morning or 7 o'clock if you're in uh, Central European time could be able to make informed decisions about whether the tank was right for them. I'm sure there will be quite a few people end up getting this tank thinking as if they were getting the next overpowered tier 10 Soviet heavy. And I think a lot of them will end up being probably quite disappointed with this tank. And I really hope that they didn't actually spend any money and only their time and their life to be able to get that 100 million credits they needed to be able to buy the tank or the 500,000 or 700,000 free experience they had to grind to be able to get this tank. Otherwise, well, I, I think there's going to be quite a lot of buyer's remorse with this vehicle. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for this tank review. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did and it was useful, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, however, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about the Object 780 in the comments down below. Do you think the vehicle looks boring? Do you think the vehicle looks really good? Does it look like it's your playstyle? Does it not look like it's your playstyle? What do you think about us having more hold down Soviet tanks, albeit with weaknesses just going into the game? And what do you think about the way that Wargaming released this? Do you think it's really cool that they have the style that was limited depending on where you purchased it? Or do you feel as if it's just a gimmicky thing that you're not interested and you're not seeing into it? and you're not dumping all of the currency that you might want to invest elsewhere and have more fun. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.